do we have here? A long SQL query failing with a lot of business logic and I have no clue what it means. That might do the trick. Let's run it in production. That's not a big issue. Wait, safety first. Let me save that query. All right, copy pasting and we are done. I don't think there is big trouble running directly in production. I mean, what could happen? is everywhere and popping up in a lot of job offers. But why is it so popular? Well, we are going to understand this by explaining which problem is it solving. Then we'll get our hands dirty and understand the basics. And finally, we'll get the feedback from some experts among the way, both from DBT Labs and from someone running DBT at scale in production. So let's get into it. SQL has been there for a while and it's here to stay. With more and more tools adopting it from data warehouse, dashboarding tools, and processing engine like Flink, Spark, it's everywhere. If you pick a data team, data analyst, data scientist, machine learning engineer, data engineer, they all at least can understand and write SQL. It's a common denominator among these profiles. So you get it, SQL is easy to use. And that's the catch. SQL has quite some limitations compared to traditional programming language. It's challenging to use variables, function, reusability of the code is difficult. And don't get even me started about testing. So building complexity and technical depth with SQL is also easy. When you start to work at scale with different teams, different environment, development, staging, production, and different databases, you're gonna either make the problem worse or you're gonna use another programming language to do a lot of duct tape and generate at the end SQL file. For instance, you will create a custom SQL template removing, for example, table names instead of having hard-coded values, then put some logic in your code and finally generate SQL file. And believe me, a lot of companies built such a duct tape processes, including myself. Bottom line is running pure SQL pipelines at scale while respecting software engineering best practice is hard. Wouldn't it be better if you had a framework that does that off the shelf with proper features? I mean, I, I hope you get it now, it's, it's in the title. So introducing dbt. Data build tools are dbt, and by the way, lowercase, not dbt, was created by Fishdown Analytics in 2016. The product was full on pursuits and they were making money with consultancy. Then they moved from the fishes and renamed themselves as dbt, 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 labs. DBT Labs. And by the way, if you didn't get that joke by now, it means I'm too old. In 2019, they introduced DBT Cloud, a paid version of DBT with premium features. DBT Cloud makes the thing easier to schedule, monitor, and run your DBT pipelines. Plus, they provide a browser IDE experience to smooth the whole development process. So the solution to the problem that we defined earlier is basically to give SQL superpowers with another programming language. And it's easier said than done. I believe Chris Peters said it very well in one of his blog posts. DBT executed very well on an obviously IDE. And in my opinion, there is two reasons why they execute it pretty well. They treat data as an engineer asset. Data team was often away from the software engineering world. Business or analysts will get their final output through some report or dashboarding and considering data as a software asset with versioning, testing, and CICD is far-fetched for that. Remember, <laughs> DBT even introduced a new name role, analytics engineer. And I think the engineer term here is a huge shift in terms of mindset. But what's an analytics engineer? Well, roughly speaking, if a data analyst and a data engineer had a baby, it would give an analytics engineer. Okay, that might be a bit too simple. So I reached out to DBT Labs itself and asked them, why is data engineer was not sufficient to you? I love that question and it's a really good one. It's more a reflection of where the industry was at the time, I think, than a reflection of data engineering as a whole. As uh, more data landed in the data warehouse, uh, it became more and more important to create some structure around it for the company to be able to use most of it. I think a lot of company focused on uh, platform as well as all of the other things. And so having a dedicated analytics engineering role 
uh, just ensured that there was someone thinking about data modeling from first principles. And that makes total sense. I think we abuse the term data engineer. And by the way, I made a video about the different kind of data engineer. So check it out. It's going to be there or there if you want more information about this. Reason number two why they became so popular quickly is that they work with the community. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of companies built such a tools internally. But before DBT, we haven't a common place to share and contribute to such a framework. The main product of DBT is open source and there is a lot of community package which make it easy to extend. All right, that's enough for the theory. Let's jump on a simple example. DBT CLI is the core of everything. You can generate a project template by using DBT init. I've already done that with some examples, so let's understand the structure of a DBT project. As you can see, there are multiple folders created depending on their usage and multiple YAML files. You're now a YAML engineer. So let's focus on the most important one. For instance, macros are basically functions that you can reuse. In this simple example, we convert cents to dollar. Then if we dive into the most important parts of the project, the models, we can see that I'm using this macro and I have also other reference like the source table, not the double curly bracket, which is the comp function used by Jinja template. Schema.yaml is used to refer your tables that you refer in your SQL code. Plus, you can add different tests and conditions at column level. Snapshot enable you to implement slowly changing dimension, type 2. And startdataengineering.com put an awesome tutorial about it, so I'll put the link in the description. The DBT project YAML file defines all configuration at the project level, where you put your models, where you put your tests. Packages.yaml is a really interesting feature from DBT where you can package some macro or other things like schema and you use them in other projects. As you can see, you can reference those package as a Git URL or living within your same repo. And finally, the profile is where you're going to define the connection against the different databases here, BigQuery, and that's how it's going to help you to run the same code against different environment or even different database. DBT support a lot of common database and cloud data warehouse integration. To finish thing, you can run your models by using DBT run CLI, run the test by using DBT test. Note that those ones are run after the data is transformed. And another big feature of dbt is the documentation. You can generate documentation by using dbt doc generates and then serve it as a web server and access the documentation of your models. All right, so now you have a beautiful tool in your hand to do any SQL pipeline. The world is yours to scale and you can solve any problem. Does that sound too good to be true? While dbt has been solving a lot of problems in our data ecosystem, there is still other nemesis. Running dbt at scale at the moment is not a piece of cake. And Charles from Astrify shared with me some advice. We struggled a lot with, uh, with dbt to put it at scale. dbt is really like you can compare it to a Ferrari. So it's really amazing, but you need to be able to drive it well. The struggle will come when you start to scale. So when, really when you will have like hundreds of models, uh, even thousands. But it's very, very important to spend a lot of time on building the right foundations. For instance, uh, having good SQL. DBT, of course, it's a SQL wrapper, but remains SQL in the end. You need to be able to write good SQL. GitOps. I mean, Git has been there forever. Having a good GitOps strategy with feature branch and a pull request and code reviews, this is really uh, this is really important. And it's not going to go anywhere. What, what is this missing, do you think? Today? I think the missing part is really the, the data modeling part, which really became like a second, second class citizen. But now with all those new modern data stack tools, people don't think uh, anymore about having like nice uh, dimensions and facts table or that everyone starts to do that. If your team starts to scale, then you end up with a lot, a lot of code and technical debt that's very hard to maintain. Bridging this data modeling to the framework, to the DBT framework is something that's, uh, that's a bit missing at the moment. Yeah. And by the way, Shah wrote a must read series about running DBT at scale. So if you are getting serious about DBT, you should definitely check out this one. I'll put the link in the description. All right, let's wrap up data folks. It's great to have a common standard open source to solve the SQL limits and to treat data as an engineer assets. It is an organization shift. Side note, DBT has an online and in-person conference happening mid-October. There will be amazing speakers talking about different things around data and analytics, not only DBT, and the conference online is free. So get up there and register. Link in the description. I mean, it's free, right? Hope you enjoyed the video. If you encounter any challenge of running DBT at scales, let me know in the comment and may the SQL pipeline be with you.